Hey, what's going on, guys? And welcome back to another video tutorial under JavaScript fundamentals. And in this video tutorial, we are going to be taking a look at the Chrome developer tools and how to use console.log function, particularly for debugging purposes. So in this entire tutorial series of JavaScript for beginners, we've seen a lot of different topics. We've seen the fundamentals, we've seen regular expressions, we've seen the control statements, we've seen what is DOM and a lot of things in this video tutorial series. So if you have missed those videos, you can check out this entire playlist. And one topic that was left out is how to perform debugging, at least at a basic level in JavaScript. And we've never seen that console.log function also. So let's try to understand what these things help us achieve. So as you can see on the screen, we have a very basic HTML document. We have the body, we have two inputs, that is two text boxes, and then we have a button. And on the on click, we are calling this add values function, which is basically taking the value from text one and text two, and just concatenating it over here, you can see. And if you just want to see an example, let me just show it to you. If I write A, B, C, I write X, Y, Z over here. And if I say add, you can see result is A, B, C and X, Y, Z. So when you enter this value, it is taken in as a string, stored it in this variable A and B, and then we just perform the addition. That is the concatenation when it comes to string. Okay, so this was very basic. We've seen such kind of examples in the previous videos. So now coming to the topic of the web developer tools that are provided by the browser itself. So almost all the modern browsers come with developer tools and the console wherein you can perform basic debugging. So in Google Chrome, if you hit F12, on a Windows machine, you'll get the Chrome developer tools and I don't really know what the shortcut is for Mac, but I'll just put it on the screen if I find it out. So if I hit F12 on the Google Chrome, you can see there is a window popping out over here. So let me just make this entire Chrome tab full screen. So let me just zoom in on this entire tab. So I'm just going to select this and I'm going to say control plus plus so that it is properly visible in the video. So the first tab is the elements tab and this element tab gives you the entire document in the coding format. So this is exactly what we've typed in in the Visual Studio code also. So let me just switch it to that. So this entire HTML code or this entire HTML document is what is seen in this HTML elements tab in the developer tools. So if you just expand this head node, you can see that you can also see the entire script that we've just typed in over here. Okay, so this is the first elements tab. Then we have the console tab, but that is something which we have over here also at the bottom. So this is that console where you can perform debugging, where you can see some real time output. So if you click on it, you get a dedicated console also. And then one last tab is the sources tab, wherein again you get a three different windows. So for the first one, we have the entire document that is default.html. So you can see the address also, it's running on our server 127.0.1. So that is because I'm using the live server plugin. If you haven't used it, you will probably see a complete file hierarchy over here. Then here we have certain breakpoints which are basically used to perform live debugging. So if you've used Java in NetBeans or C Sharp in the Visual Studio or some other proper ID, you must be knowing that we can go step by step and perform debugging. And then we have an option to step ahead into the entire code and perform debugging in the live scene, right? So that same functionality can be done in JavaScript using this web dev tools. So that is really helpful. So yes, we'll take a very basic example of that debugging also. But right now this is how your web dev tools looks like. Let's get acquainted with it. So we've seen elements tab in the web dev tools wherein you can see the entire structure of the HTML document. If you just hover on it, you can see it is getting highlighted also. That is the individual HTML elements are getting highlighted. We can also see the script and then the console is something that you can do some live stuff over here. So you can see five plus six. And if you see, you are getting an output of 11. If you hit enter, you get 11. And then you can do some basic mathematics stuff over here. This is just for you doing some experiments, but let's move to the code and let's see the console.log function, which will actually help us see some output on the console. So right now in the code, what I'm doing is I'm just taking a and B and I'm printing it on this label, right? So this is that label and I'm changing the inner HTML property. So the label is this H2 tag. It's not a label. It's a heading to tag with an ID of OP. So I'm accessing it over here by using the get element by ID and I'm changing the inner HTML value. Okay. So instead of this, if I just wanted to see the output on the console, we have a function which comes with console dot log. And then you can do a plus B over here. And now the output will be seen on the console. So this console is 
a DOM object which gives us access to this entire console on the website. And since JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language, this console is basically an object which can access this entire console on the web development tools. And then it has certain methods along with it. So this log is just one method. It has multiple methods. I'll drop some links in the video description if you want to explore more on this. So if I just comment this out and keep this as it is, let's see if this works. So I'm going to say ABC and I'm going to say XYZ. When I say add, you can see on the console it is getting printed, right? So let me just zoom in a little bit more. So this is that output. Okay. So this is another way wherein you can see some output on the console and then you can actually make it live because you don't want to print it on your website or the web document directly. You might want to first test it out on your console and then you can print it in the output. Okay. So this is one way to see output using JavaScript. So the next thing that you can do is you can perform some basic debugging on the console also. So coming to the code, let's say if you miss out some basic syntax. Okay. So if I just cut this out, you can see I'm getting an error over here in the text editor itself, but some errors are undetected by the text editor. So let's say I'm going to be printing it on the screen. That is, I'm going to print the part that is, I'm going to print the addition or concatenation of A and B in the H2 tag over the results, right? So let's say A and B or A and B. And if I hit add, I'm getting a B, but now in the coding, I just miss out this plus. Okay. So you can see in the text editor, it is not getting highlighted. We are not getting any errors and we cannot visually see this. So we are not sure where we have exactly made a mistake. Now, if I try to add a and B, and if I say add, I'm not getting any output. So if you're wondering, okay, what exactly has happened? There is no way to find out from the text editor, right? So let's say this is a thousand line code of JavaScript. So where exactly are you going to find out the mistake, right? So this is where you can see in the console, we, we've got a issue, uncaught reference error, AB is not defined. And then it gives us exactly where the problem is. So default.html at line number 10. So this 10 represents the line number. Okay. And it is happening on on click, right? So when you call the on click event, our custom function is called. So if I click on this, it will directly take me to the line where exactly the error is happening. And you can see it is also getting highlighted. So it goes under the sources tab in the default.html and it is showing me where exactly the error is happening. So in the code, I can go ahead and I can see, okay, I forgot a plus sign over here. I can change it over here. And then this is where exactly I can find my mistake very easily because the output is shown on the console. Okay. So this was one more thing that you can do to perform debugging in a fast way. So now you can do little more things also. You can enhance this and you can do that live debugging also. So for that, if you go under the sources tab, you can see we have certain things like breakpoints. We have XHR fetch breakpoints, DOM breakpoints, global listeners, event listeners. So we'll not look into all of these as of now. Let's go to the event listeners. And if you scroll down, you can see that we have different events happening on the screen. So we've talked about events, right? So we have click events, we have scroll events, we have some manipulation events, and there are n number of events. As you can see, we have different types over here. So right now we are interested in the mouse event and especially we are interested in the click event because when we click on the button, what we are calling is an on click event, right? So just select this and what exactly this is doing is this will perform live debugging. So now if I type in some values, I say Tanmay and space Sakpal, that's my name. And now if I click on this button, you can see that it is paused in debugger, which means this area becomes gray. And now we have come and this line gets highlighted. So this is where the on click has happened. And right now what is being called is add values function. So now we have different options over here. You can see these signs. We have step into next function call. We have step out of the current function and we have step. So when we click on step, we will go one step ahead. That is, we will go to the add values function, right? So if I click on it, you can see the control is transferred inside this function. And right now, if you hover on this variable A, it is showing undefined. But if I click on step again, or if I click F9, now you can see A has become Tanmay because that's what I've entered over here. And you can see now variable A is holding value of Tanmay. If you just hover on it, you can see that value. Similarly, if I step one more ahead, B value holds Sakpal. So I can see live what is happening step by step. And this is a functionality which we have in NetBeans ID when you do Java programming, or this is also there in C sharp when you do .NET programming in Visual Studio and many other IDs, but this is not there directly in the text editor Visual Studio. I suppose we probably might have some plugin for this, 
but this can be done in web dev tools and most professional developers do use this web dev tools because there is lot more than just this but this is at a very basic level that you can do so again going ahead you can see the output is being printed over here and in the output you can see result equals to tanmay sakpal so right now we have just commented the console.log so that's why the function is completely over and if you again step ahead our function is basically done right so this was another example wherein you can just track a particular event so you can do multiple events you can select a lot of them together if you are watching different events right now we just did it at a very basic level you can individually mark some debugging points also so let's say you want to start debugging from this point so you can do that so you can see paused in debugger so you come directly at this point then you go ahead step by step by using the step function if you want to step out of this function you can you can select this step out of current function and it completely takes you out of that function and then there are a lot of things that you can experiment around i just wanted to show you at a very basic level how you can perform basic debugging and how the console.log function can help you see some output on the console wherein you can see if there is an error happening or not okay so this was a very basic video tutorial on console.log function and as well as the web dev tools that are provided by the chrome browser by default i'm pretty sure other all modern browsers also have their respective consoles and developer tool options but i have not really used them so i'm going to be sticking with chrome so yeah that's it for this video guys thanks for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up do share it with your friends and see you guys in the next video peace